Hello everyone. Well, just to be honest with you, um, they cut my phone completely off. I mean, the phone went off. I cannot get it back. So I had to borrow somebody else's phone. I don't think they like that information that is going forth. Oh, well, devil, just deal with it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So I'm going to redo the whole video. As I was saying that Christians should not be celebrating Halloween because of the fact, number one, it's called Day of the Dead. That's why skeletons, and you can do the research or your own, skeletons are situated and associated with Day of the Dead, which is Halloween. Come on, somebody, hallelujah to his name. So, um, I'm going to continue. I'm going to talk to you about why the pumpkin is associated with it that's where i left off at and i was kind of surprised but you know how they don't they don't like the truth going out so please forgive me you can still look at that other video because you know it's nothing like the first time because um i was more direct with it but that's why oh that's what i was saying thank you holy spirit i was also saying that a lot of you parents that buy your children clothes with skulls on it you are actually inviting a spirit of death into your home. I'm not kidding. Everything is a spirit, people. Everything is a spirit. Stop playing. I know you just want to live in this little world and act like, okay, we're just of the world and, and it's no harm. Everything of the devil is harmful. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So as I was getting to the point, I was talking about how pumpkins came into the picture. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this again. Every year we head to the pumpkin patches and I'm talking about the Christians and the ones that actually do this. Select the plumpest pumpkin of them all and haul the guard home. We whip out the carving knife. We decorate our pumpkin with a spooky face and then illuminate it with a candle. Not illumination. You know that comes from Illuminati word, right? Okay. But why do we do this? It all started centuries ago with the character named Stingy Jack. Jack was part of an Irish myth thought to have originated in the 17th century now actually this guy was real okay and this is exactly what happened okay um this is what happened in what your name a man named stingy jack he invites the devil for a drink and this is also on history channel so you know history channel is pretty accurate jack did not want to pay for his drink something we can all relate to so he coerced the devil into turning himself into a coin our essential reports that Jack promptly pocketed the coin, but later set the devil free under one condition. He had to leave Jack and his soul alone. But Jack wasn't done with his trickery. He later, he later conned the devil again, but this time it didn't end so well. Jack was banished from both heaven and hell. Jack was condemned to a never-ending night. His only source of light, a piece of a burning coal sitting inside of a carved turnip. All right, like this. And so they talk about, you know, actually, to be honest with you, this is chanting. The next thing they talk about chanting, and I'm not finna do no chanting. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And if you go ahead and Google what I'm doing and, and what I'm saying here, if you see this mumbo jumbo, and that's what it is, it's chanting. It, it's crazy how they, they leave the story and they go straight into a chanting. I'm not getting ready to do this. Then they talk about the headless horseman and... um. It's much like the Headless Hartmans that Jack the Old Lantern. So that's why they call it Jack Old Lantern. All right. So now, this is Irish and Scottish children delighted in their carvings, their own scary faces in turnips, potatoes, and beets. Now, that's what they used to use before they used pumpkins. They used turnips, potatoes, and beets. And they set ghastly faces by their homes to scare Jack's spirit away. So the whole thing was... It was to scare the guy that originated all this devilish stuff to scare his spirit away because so say his spirit was lingering. Come on, somebody. You know that was probably a demon. Let's be honest. So as with many American tradition, this tradition is a story of immigration and immigration. Immigration and immigration are both. So when Irish and Scottish people ignited to America, they brought their Hollywood, their Hollywood, I'm sorry. When Irish and Scottish people emigrated to America, they brought their Halloween traditions with them. Pumpkins, which are native to Central America, but had grown by Native Americans for quite some time, became the assumptive canvas for a new generation of children. So that's how jack-o'-lanterns actually evolved over the years. Now, 
some people get really in serious into this stuff but uh, there goes that bug every time <laughs> but um like i'm saying to you and, and i know at the end of the day at the end of the night you guys are gonna do what you want to do but i'm just saying make sure you understand why you're doing what you're doing you know and i always tell you all the time if you don't feel comfortable with what i'm saying to you guys go to god go to god say god you know is this true? God will always send confirmation of everything. But um, this is their night. It's not supposed to be our night. This is the day of the dead. Point blank. I don't care how you dress it up, how you try to put it. Oh, we're just having fun. You want to go have drinks? Y'all going to have drinks anyway. But why do you have to put on this devil stuff? I went to Walmart earlier, and this woman had a skeleton on and her mask. And I mean, as a matter of fact, let's go deeper. Mardi Gras from Louisiana. And you know I'm from Louisiana. That's the same thing. That's the day of the day as well. That's celebration of the day, as a matter of fact. So all of that intertwined together, and you Christians don't understand that? Oh, but because we have hollow harvest night and um, trunk or treat and hallelujah night, and then I just saw a couple of um, clips, actually. That old bug, I don't know where it's come from. Um, I just saw a couple of things on Facebook where people are having, you know, they're having their harvest time. And just like I said, it's about money. Go ahead and go through your timeline on Facebook. They selling things at the um, harvest time. They selling things at the hallelujah. So all this is about money. Is that is that why you're doing this? Because if you want to just give the kids some candy, you could have waited till they come to church Saturday or Sunday. <laughs> but anyway, that's a whole different other ball game, right? So God bless you. And uh, Elijah, what did people who are watching can never say they did not know straight? Well, I'll tell you one thing. I think that people know they just do what they want to do, Elijah. And that's just the way it is. And, and truth be told, we all, we all have a choice. That's one thing about the Lord thy God. He gives us, that's why we have free will, permissive will, which is our will and God's will, right? And unfortunately, I think people, they play so much until, you know, it reminds me of Samson. And I love Samson. That was my first ever sermon on Samson and Delilah. Samson kept playing and kept playing with Delilah. Now, I want to school y'all right quick. Delilah. Everything is in the name. Delilah. She was a lie from the beginning. And when I read that, that, that story over and over again, he kept telling her how much he loved her. But not once did she say she loved him. So that lets me know God's people are always playing with things they shouldn't be playing with. Come on, somebody. And then we'll tell their all heart and give their all soul to it. Come on, somebody. Because then she lied to him twice. Call people in. Call the Philistines to try to get him. Twice. It shouldn't have been a third time. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But he was so blinded by what he thought he wanted. Until he told her his strength was in his hair and what happened they came and they gossed out his eyes and i mean she had already cut off his strength and everything and the bible says and samson knew not that god had left him hallelujah you don't hear what i'm saying samson knew not that god had left him and i'm afraid that's what we have here in the body of Christ, and I'm just being honest, because I love my brothers and sisters, even the strange ones, even the ones that don't like me. Come on, somebody, hallelujah, because they lost. But some of them don't even know. God has left them. And so our position is not just to judge or condemn. That's not what I'm doing here. But to pray for them, to pray for wisdom and discernment and clarity, because people will take the scripture and twist it and turn it to fit what they want it to fit. So God bless you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Be safe tonight. Stay prayed up tonight. Be on alert. And you know, roll out, soldiers. Love you.